All right, this is the first question involving fluency and activities that promote it. I want you to take a moment. I want two minutes. Read this question to yourself on your own. Go. Unpause. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is from the old 90 test. Almost certain this is from that old um, Foundations of Reading 90 test. I was not able to locate where the question was, but um, we will, uh, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure it's either on this old 190 or possibly on an older uh, RECA uh, exam. It's a great question. Uh, it says here, a second grade, and by the way, I'm going to circle second grade. Um, <clears throat> The newer exams, they throw out scenarios where the students are in first grade with fluency. The older exams, it's more second grade with fluency. But, but let's continue. Um, a second grade student has demonstrated the ability to decode individual words accurately, but she, but she reads very slowly and laboriously. So what does that mean? Well, we have this second grade student. So let's put down, you know, um, second grade, we're thinking, you know, any, uh, if kindergarten is five through six and first grade is six through seven, then we're looking at second grade seven through eight-ish. The seven or eight-year-old uh, young girl, she's able to decode with accuracy. Wonderful. However, she's, she's very slow, or we could say here, and uh, <clears throat> laboriously. Okay, what? so that is basically this right here, you know, haltingly right word by word choppy that's it that's that's a, another way of describing that right when she uh when the teacher tries to engage the when the okay so so she's struggling with fluency do you agree so it's not a, it's not a decoding issue because she's accurate it's a fluency issue okay keep going when the teacher tries to engage the student in oral reading activities she feels embarrassed and would rather read silently. Who wouldn't feel embarrassed, right? You've been in this spot. You've maybe struggled with fluency and it's choppy and uncomfortable. You, you've had that feeling before, I'm sure. I know you have. And, and yes, that's a real thing. And of course, if you're feeling embarrassed, you wouldn't want to read aloud to other students. It'd be embarrassing, yes? Okay. Uh, which of the following modifications in instruction would be most mo appro uh, appropriate and effective for helping her, uh, this, this student improve her reading fluency? Okay, so how are we going to help her with fluency? We have to help her both with fluency and dealing with feeling embarrassed and uncomfortable. So we have these options here. During the classes, I like to play a game. It's, it's called Red Flag. <clears throat> or you can think of it as like a foul. If you read a scenario and uh, it's a red flag, I want you to raise the red flag. Now, not this, this is from an older test. So we're going back, to, you know, at least 10 years. But, um, and, and not these, these ideas, um, they're not terrible ideas. I mean, it's just not what we would do to build up if we wanted to target specifically fluency and confidence. So we have to have those two components. Here's the first one here. Encourage her to serve as an audience for other students' oral reading until she demonstrates a willingness to read aloud herself. So in partner work, right? You know, it's okay to have one student read while the other one turns the page and then you take turns. But this one here sounds like the way they're presenting audience here, it feels like a red flag right? It sounds like they're, they're just being asked to shh, don't say anything, right? A until you're, you're willing to read. And I don't think that willingness is going to happen, okay? Because it's not really addressing her issues with fluency. So we're going to cross this out. Um, it's not quite the same as this. This is supposed to be more interactive. You do it for a little while, then I take over and do it for a little while. Okay, so let's cross out A. <clears throat> How about uh, C? Teaching, uh, teaching her to use self-monitoring uh, as she reads to improve her literary, li uh, uh, literal comprehension and ability to read with prosody. So let's circle this one right here, self-monitoring. If you've ever worked with a student who struggles with reading and, and uh, they are very aware 
of it. I'm sure and self-monitoring is being aware of when, when there's a breakdown, either in comprehension or in fluency. If you've ever worked with a student that struggles, okay, they don't need to be told that they're struggling. They know that that's why she feels embarrassed because she's struggling. So she does not need to be taught that she's struggling. Would you agree? This is already being exhibited here in how she's feeling. Now, so that's not going to help her. Uh, it's only going to make her more frustrated. Uh, and it doesn't, and this isn't really focusing on the, the fluency thing. This is saying self-monitoring self is for comprehension. So yes, self-monitoring, if it's comprehension, it might help with literary, uh, literal comprehension. Um, it's not really helping with prosody, right? I mean, it might be if they're aware of, she already knows that this breaks that there's a breakdown in pronunciation of words, right? In speed. So we're going to cross that one off too. We'll red flag that. Okay. How about this? Provide, uh, provide her with explicit phonics instruction to improve her word identification skills before reading, um, before, before requiring her to read aloud. Is it that? Does she need help with phonics? It says here she can decode words accurately. So you wouldn't have to do this, um, you know, in advance, right? No. A lot of times what teachers do is when a student is not, is lacking fluency, is they go back to phonics rules. They think that it's a phonics thing, and a default, always phonics. Not fluent, let's work on your phonics in isolation. And that's not always the case either, right? Cross that one. And that could be very frustrating for a student to go back and learn the same phonics rule again. They've learned it. They know it. That's not the issue. The issue is the practice piece. What they need is time to practice. And that's what B is. Having her reread a text several times using whisper reading to build her fluency and confidence with respect to the text. So whisper reading is exactly what you do, let's say, if you're doing reader's theater. You read a text several times quietly to yourself, and what that's doing is building up that speed, accuracy, and expression until the point where you're, you feel confident to read it out loud. So whisper reading is, a, is enough. You could think of it as another way of building speed, accuracy, and expression. And um, in this case right here, by whisper reading it, it would ultimately help with fluency and with her success in reading that text fluently. It would help with her confidence too. So that's that's the best answer here. So team, this is an older test. You can tell by the writing. You can also tell by the answers. They feel a little bit different than some of the other answers that we've done. But I'm hoping that you can kind of see um, that some of these answers, even though this is an older test, some of these are definitely like a red flag. Red flag. They all have their own problems, which is why we we're crossing out A, C, and D. So see if you can spot the reasons why A, C, and D are wrong. Understand that red flag, even though it could be updated a little bit. Understand why they're wrong. And also understand why, you know, um, based on the scenario, trying to foster fluency and confidence, understand why B is the best answer. This one, uh, again, um, uh, it's from an older test. I'm not so sure which one. I think it's from either uh, the 90 or the RECA, but it's at least 10 years old, but it does give you exposure to some of these ideas, okay? And the answer is B, all right? Okay, let's keep going. 